Welcome to Talk To Me Show. It's another day that God has made and I am so, so happy to be here and I'm hoping you are happy to be connected too. So it's Rose Bijou Ramirez and I'm here with the Talk To Me Show bringing you another important topic that I believe will be useful for all of us. So if you've just tuned in now, share with your friends, invite your family members, put me on your screen at home, do your own watch parties. If you're on YouTube, go to my YouTube, Rose Biju Ramirez, and follow us there as well. And it's gonna be an amazing show because as always, I bring topics that are useful for us as human beings, topics that are useful for us as Christians, topics that are useful for us as a community. And today, we will be discussing something that is paramount, dyslexia and its impact on education, but especially focusing on the ethnic minorities. I like to quote Bible scriptures. The Bible declares, my people perish due to lack of knowledge. If you know the right information, in the words of Kofi Annan, where knowledge is power. If you have the right information, it will help lead you to go to the right way to know what to do. So today I will be having guests that are uh, specialists in certain domains. Someone who's a specialist in dyslexia because she has her own charity helping people with dyslexia. And I'm going to have teachers as well so we can discuss the impact of learning disabilities and uh, dyslexia on the education system of our children. And why not in us as well as adults? So before we continue, I just want to invite you to share. I am going to take one minute to share. As you can see, I got my phone. And I am sharing, and I want you all that are connected in your homes, do share, do invite. Because if you don't share, I will be talking all by myself and all the information I have and my guests have will stay with them and they will take it home. But if you share, you are helping impact somebody's life with something they did not know. So I'm giving you 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. Come on, get sharing, get sharing. <laughs> I see Esperance Buka Ramirez, you are connected. Mama Marcelina Ramirez, you are connected. Sister Susina, you are connected. So I am waiting for you all to share so we can talk. Okay. You're still not sharing. Shall we start? Okay. So my um, vision on life is impacting people positively. I have had people in my life who have been a good example to me, who have given me information that I have used that has made me the woman I am today. I have had role models in my life in the forms of my mother, Marcelina Ramirez, in the form of my father, Villa Joa Ramirez, in the forms of my pastors, Pastor Enoch, Pastor uh, Joshua Livke Senkosi, Pastor Elizabeth. There's so many people in my life in the form of Apostle Lou Joseph who have instilled something inside of me and I in turn have given it back to the community, to the society. Um, there's a lot of unawareness, lack of awareness of a lot of things in our community, especially the African and ethnic minority communities. We either don't pay attention to things or we just don't know. Some things that we don't know, we label them taboos. We label them witchcraft. We label them magic. We label them silliness because we don't understand. There's always that fear of the unknown. If you don't know something, you are either going to be afraid of it or you are going to completely ignore it. And ignorance, as we all know, kills. So today we want to talk about dyslexia because I have had people around me um, 
I've had friends, I have had uh, family members, I have had um, colleagues that have suffered from dyslexia, but some of them have been labeled as being stupid, some have been labeled as having witchcraft, some have been labeled to be demonically possessed. I really don't understand what it is with the African community, that if something is so absolutely strange, we jump straight into witchcraft. We like to talk about witchcraft a lot. If you don't understand something, Christians like to label things demonic rather than going into research to find out what exactly is about this issue. We like to label things witchcraft. We like to label things as um, magic. We like to label things as um, uh, demonic. Whereas sometimes if you took your time to do research about a certain topic, you may just find it was just a child being a child or it was just you not knowing because in your community that thing is not very well known. And so today we don't want to go in the fear of the unknown. <clears throat> Let's get learners. So we're going to talk about what we can do to empower people. But I have with me a guest that has been dyslexic herself or was dyslexic herself. I mean, I'm not going to stop talking when I let you talk about <laughs> it herself. And then she has um, overcome the fear. She has overcome the obstacles. And she, in turn, is doing what I do in my vision, trying to impact the world. But let's hear from her a little bit. So I'm going to welcome my guest. Stay connected, and I hope you are sharing. So, hello. Hi, sister. <laughs> sister Iris, how are you today? I am very, very well, thank you. How are you feeling today? Oh, we shouldn't complain. The weather's been absolutely wonderful. It, it is, and isn't it? And we all bl I'm blessed to be here. I thank you for inviting me. I am happy you came. Oh. The weather is so amazing. Imagine with all this lockdown oh. and the pandemic, if we had to add miserable English weather <laughs> to it, that would have been absolutely terrible. Uh, we've been blessed with a very good one, especially yeah. this week. Yeah, yes. and at least the Lord has been um, favorable to us. He said, okay, you've suffered too much. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you doom and gloom with the rain. <laughs> so let, this, let there be light. And there was light and we got absolutely. the sun. Absolutely. Okay, so okay. you relax and ready to talk today? Oh, always ready. Always this is ready. talk to me. Yes, I will talk. This to is you. talk to me. <laughs> I'm willing to talk. Yes, okay. I'm happy to. So um, just quickly tell us, um, firstly, who you are and mm -hmm. what it is that you do in life. Uh, my name is Iris, mm -hmm. um, Iris Sandra. So mm -hmm. most people know me as Irish, mm -hmm. and then some, some people know me as Sandra. Mm -hmm. uh, I am the CEO of Africa Dyslexic United. Mm -hmm. I am mother of four, and mm -hmm. I am married to a wonderful husband. He's called John Vita. Oh, this husband yes. is so proud <laughs> right now, I'm sure, hearing you. <laughs> okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so why Africa Dyslexic? Lexia United. United. Yes. Um, it's a very, very important question you've asked me. Mm -hmm. Like I say, we are all from Africa. Mm -hmm. And I get to be asked dyslexic. Dyslexic. You know, when I, I, I come across anybody, they know, oh, oh, your organization is Africa. So dyslexic, especially when it hits to us black people, that one is absolutely something out of this world. So dyslexia, you get asked a lot about a dyslexia. A lot about dyslexia. Mm -hmm. uh, dyslexia is basically how I started the organization. Let me start from there and then I'll tell you why the organization oh, I'll be doing. Was I'll be doing the questioning. Yes, be doing okay, the I'll do the answer, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So I want to know uh, okay. why this like Afri this Africa African Dyslexia United. United. Yes. Sir. What prompted you to organize First this? First of all, yeah. we are from Africa. Mm -hmm. Dyslexic is a disability or this uh, invisible disability not too many Africans they are aware of. So or, dyslexia yeah, is invisible. It's invisible. It's mm -hmm. absolutely you could not tell because um, as term is disability, you expect somebody to be blind, to be deaf, to be wheeled on a chair. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, that's mm -hmm. term disability. Mm -hmm. You want somebody to be in kind of on, on you know, something debilitated. debilitated. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's the word, the word. I'm trying debilitated. To find. debilitated. Mm -hmm. Yes, and because dyslexic, it's not. This child is perfect. You know, well, you know, they can express themselves so well. They can play with like with the other children, but when it comes to tell them, go on, read and write what you're telling me is another story. So, united. Why I started that, and I realized in all Africa, 
there's lack of knowledge, there's lack of awareness lack of, of awareness. dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I decided, it's because my organization is um, uh, basically, it's international. So because it's international, I decided I'm going to name it Africa Dyslexic United. Okay. It's going to unite all the dyslexic Africa around the world. Wow, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you decided to start an organization called Africa Dyslexia dyslexic United, United yes. because you you know that there is a lack of awareness about dyslexia yes, yes. in the African and ethnic minorities Minority, group. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. just quickly, briefly explain to me what you really believe in your heart at dyslexia. I know you've just explained a little okay, bit, yeah. but what is dyslexia really? Dyslexic, first of all, it's, uh, like I said, it was, it's, it's um, invisible disability. Mm -hmm. The child, it's born normal. Mm -hmm. The struggle of that child, the battles, as I call it, the fight starts when the child starts school. Mm -hmm. Because dyslexic brain is not being programmed, as I always say, to be reading or writing. Mm -hmm. They're more in creative side. Mm -hmm. They're not in reading, writing side. So in, in terms of the brain, you know, in brain, we have like a sound of al alphabetical. Yeah. But for dyslexic person, that sound it hasn't been developed in, or, you know, in the brains. Mm -hmm. So a child doesn't know what's happening. A mother at home thinking, you know, there's nothing wrong with my child. But there's a little bit of um, symptoms, I would say. Child at home, I'll say you'll be the oldest child. You'll be sending them to do certain tasks. They're always forgetful. Mm -hmm. That's a little, you know, symptoms. It started a hint before they start school. So is it like a little bit of retardation in understanding, understanding instructions? Understanding things. It, they call it short memory of uh, capturing things, remembering things. Example, a dyslexic child, you can give them a list. You tell them, go to the shop, get milk, bread, butter. Their brain just recorded butter. Butter. Mm, they, they select it. They what select they remember. You remember. The brain mm. tends to do that. So they'll, they'll go. It's like... What did you just ask me to do? Exactly. And then the child doesn't know what is happening. And then, example, that child being an older child, and then you could send a younger brother, within a minute, the child comes, brings up everything. Mm. So they're a bit slow and not slow quite sharp. Slow in mem yeah, in remembering. Mm -hmm. And then the battle, like I say, the soon as they go to school, even the nursery rhyme, you know, you know, you get to say twinkle, twinkle, something twinkle, simple, twinkle, twinkle, twinkle this song star. star, yeah. That child started to struggle even to remember, you know, to record nursery the nursery rhymes. Mm. So the parents don't even know what is happening. The child himself or herself doesn't know what is going okay. on. So ah. those kinds of symptoms. That's Thank you. You've already explained the symptoms as okay. well. Mm. Now, you yourself, because okay. um, we, we spoke before we came on the show, yeah. obviously, mm -hmm. and mm. then you yourself, I am dyslexic. You dyslexic. Yes. Oh my goodness. So tell me a little bit. It's good to, when you're talking about the topic, you actually have the person mm. who've experienced it themselves because, you know, mm. the Bible says you give what you have. Mm -hmm. So if you have encountered an experience, you've gone through something, it is more powerful for you to actually explain it to people and mm. actually be credible because we call it being a credible witness. Mm -hmm. You will be, your information you give will be more valid because it's not just from textbooks. You mm -hmm. have been through it. So... Mm. You are dyslexic. Yes. How did you find out you were dyslexic? Because you were talking about children mm -hmm. being dyslexic, having symptoms. But you yourself, how were you diagnosed? How did you find out that you were dyslexic? Wow. Um, like uh, um, I, was, well, I was born in Congo, mm -hmm. you know, born in Kinshasa. So I knew there was something not quite right about myself mm -hmm. compared to my other siblings. Yep. You know, we'll sit on the table as a family, they'll get them you know, to get us to read. My brother, my younger brother, because I'm the only girl, mm -hmm. my younger brother, he'll read like a speed rocket, you know, bang, bang, is done. But me, it was just like basically trying to put my, my brain in something that my brain was refusing. Right. It came torturing in a family. 
they were thinking you know as african you know as you know that you have to be a role model you mm. have to be the one that they expect you to perform everything was so great it the struggles it got to the bed you know back home the whip comes along oh because you're not yeah. doing good at school exactly or? because i wasn't performing well in school how wow. my parents wanted me to perform wow. as a child you you don't know what is happening around your world you mm. want somebody to explain to you mm. or somebody to tell you what is going on mm. why can other children perform in class why why could not I? okay it was bringing it you know sadness in my life and mm. you know as an African child, you can't express your, your sadness to your parents. You're not allowed. You're not allowed. You're not, you know how it is. And the years went by, and it was just a torture after torture. Mm. So we came to UK, you know, from a young age. And I started education. The funny thing is I'm going to make people laugh at home. When our parents decided we're going to come to live in UK, in, in England, I'm like, wow. So this reading and writing is only a... Kinshasa thing, there's only an African thing. Mm. As soon as we leave the country, all right, I could be able, you know, you to, were able and to write. read and write. Because I was thinking, I, all child has dreams. Every child has a dream. I thought it was just a phase I was going through being mm. a young person. Mm. I thought as I'm getting older, you know, all this struggling with reading and writing will disappear. Everything. But it will, carried on. It carried on. But my, because dyslexic is all different. Like I say, all disability it is different. Mm. You know, some this you know, I would say people who are, have crippled, some they are on the crutches, mm -hmm. some they're on the wheelchairs. Mm. So it's all different. Money would just take me time to read something mm. and then to you know to uh, absorb that information. Yeah. Something mild will take me hours. Then we got to UK, started, you know, school. And then I felt like I was good at sports because a lot, um, lot of dyslexic people, they are very creative. Mm. You know, they are good at sports, they are mm. good at music, they are good at art. You, you know, we're very creative. I was good at that. But even that, I was still scared to come and show my parents what I was good at because yeah. my parents, as being African parents, there was no... Um, encouraging me you know what they wanted to see i wow. said mom i've drew this picture and i'm so happy my mom will be like yeah that's all you can draw you can't even read properly mm. and write properly my goodness let me that, mm. Mm. sorry to stop mm. you for a minute mm. there mm. it's like there's a, a lot of uh, negative parenting in um mm. african community well Absolutely. not maybe not now but yeah. when we were younger. younger so when a child does terrible instead of researching you sort of whip them down again it's you exactly silly child even just you know mm. my things you know try to encourage me mm. because I needed that encouragement because mm. I wasn't good at anything to please you the only thing that if I've managed to push myself to do something well I wanted my mom to be proud of me mm. because when I was growing up I was so good at dancing yeah. I would just watch something next minute I'll be dancing and more than that so I wanted my parents to tell me well done but my parents I was still scared because they were still bringing the reading and writing on my because face. in their eyes, if you can't read, you can't write. Mm -hmm. You are you are not good oh, enough. Oh no, forget it. You're just worth nothing. Okay. Years went by. You know, I started to withdraw myself away from everybody. I, I'm a very bubbly person, Sister Rosa. Yeah, Kenobi. you're bubbly. You're very are. bubbly person. Yeah, you are. But I used to hide myself in so many things. Mm. Now I could share my stories. You know, thank God now they said my story can be made a book. I had good, to, brilliant. Yeah. You know. To come out in our community, it was it wasn't easy. Yeah, let me just yeah. yeah. So so, when exactly mm -hmm. were you diagnosed as um, dyslexic, and then when did you decide to come out? So um, when were you diagnosed? Much older? I think no, just a couple of years, and I got diagnosed because I was suffering from depression for so long. So you were yeah. diagnosed as an adult? As an, an adult. Oh my goodness. So adults out there could mm. be dyslexic mm -hmm. and they don't know about it. It's not yes. just, it can still be diagnosed as an adult. It, absolutely. Mm. It took, it's quite a lot of procedure. That's why I always fight for the children. Mm. Because dyslexic child, you can save, you know, as a child, 80%. Mm. Because the brain is still fresh. Mm. You know, you still quite a lot to, you know, to pick up. Mm. But as a, you get, a, you know, as, as you get an adult, it's not easy. That's why I always say it's easier to, you know, to start um, detecting At a child. Point. So mm, mm. you got diagnosed as an adult. Yes. So all these years as a child, as a teenager, you felt something was wrong with you and uh, you were depressed about it. Uh, how is it like the public <laughs> were treating you wrongly, apart from the family, your, your relationships with people, your friendships? What made you depressed about it? 
I know it's going to be so many people out there watching me who are affected by dyslexia. Mm. Especially in our community, you can't talk about it. It's a taboo thing. How can you tell somebody, they'll say you are silly, why are you telling us you stupid? Yeah, exactly. That's the word that we said. It's taboo and then he's such a stigma in our community. Mm. You can't break it out because the way people start seeing you, it's totally different. And then because of lack of knowledge, people do not know there's so much into dyslexic person apart from reading and writing. So years went by, I was living in shame. I was hiding. I felt like I was, my life was like a, like a criminal. Mm. I didn't want nobody to find out. Even my own husband, I didn't want him to find out. Oh, you got married yeah, to somebody. You, you did not tell them you were oh, dyslexic. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but, but then again, you didn't really know you were dyslexic, but you yeah. just felt something was yes. wrong with you. Yeah, I knew there was something wrong with me. Did you, did you not tell him you could not read or I, write? I, no, I, I, I was struggling with reading or writing. Did you sort of dodge the subject? So the many dyslexic out there, even children at home. We, I think we've just become pros to hide these um, learning differences as they call So how it. do you dodge reading? You dodge how do you reading? dodge writing? Oh, you, do, you know, you'll get someone, you know, you're, you're trying to read something, you don't know, you tell somebody, Eva, you make up excuses, you haven't got your glasses. Mm. Are oh. you listening to this? Uh. <laughs> no glasses. Yes. You know, you, wow. can't, you have ways. I mean, I don't blame. That's why when I give counseling to loads of dyslexic people, I say, I don't blame you because this shame started from the day one when you started school. Imagine you've been carrying this embarrassment from age six to the age 40 something or 50 something you are. So I think the fear of being found out that you can't read or write weighs down and you hide it even more. Yes, because you don't want people to judge you to see you differently. So who diagnosed you with dyslexia? I always tell people I was blessed the day I went to my doctors. Like I said, I was going through antidepression mm -hmm. because I, there's so much was going around in my life. My dyslexia, it was kind of barrier to me. Mm -hmm. So I started to start, you know, I started to get depressed and I went to my doctors mm -hmm. and I started to speak to my doctors. He was a very nice doctor. I was really blessed to get to meet him that day. I think that mm. day was my deliverance. So you went to your GP, went your to family my GP. doctor. Yes, the family mm. doctor. And I started to uh, speak to him, and he refused that day to give him an antidepression. And you were on antidepressants. Yes, because you were depressed about your life. M yes. Okay. So my, you know, being depressed, my dyslexia paid a big part of it. Mm. But I didn't want to tell him. So you know, you get repeated prescription, um, repeated, uh, repeated, repeated prescription. prescription. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I was due that week. And I went to the reception. He left the note. He told me, he told the receptionist lady, when Sandra comes in, tell her to come and see me. Mm -hmm. So, and I came in, I was very nice lady. I said, okay, can I get repeated prescription? The, the lady said, no, the doctor wants to see you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? And then the lady said, no, he wants to see you, he wants to talk to you. Then, then I went to the doctors. The doctor said, you know, Sandra, you're such a lovely woman, lady. I feel like, you know, we're not helping you. We need to get to the bottom of this depression. And I said, if I tell you, you won't get it. He said, try me, darling. Mm. Try me. I've heard too many stories. So I don't think yours is high enough. Just pause there. Okay. You're watching. Talk <laughs> to me. <laughs> if you haven't shared yet, please share. <laughs> Woman of God, Rose Bijou Ramirez, a talk to me. And I've got Sandra Aris here. This is important. She's telling us how she was diagnosed with dyslexia maybe you are at home full of shame mm -hmm. embarrassment mm -hmm. you've got children you don't want to tell they're dyslexic listen to this part so you said you're beautiful okay. you're you good giving young all these compliments and, and then need to get to the bottom it works and then i started to cry and then i started to tell him the story i said i always wanted to you know to carry on with my study and i always wanted to do this do that do that and then because of my struggle with reading and writing it's actually enabled me to do that. And then the doctor went, do you know something, Sandra? So many dyslexic, most of them, they're African, they do not even know. Mm -hmm. When he mentioned dyslexic, I thought I had some disease or oh. something. The shock of my the face. The word dyslexia. I was, what, 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 you know, as African, the African came out of me. Tell me, what, what is that? He started to laugh. He said, if you want to find most of dyslexic people, especially young black men, go to the prison. Young black. So the ethnic minorities are more prone yes. to being dyslexic. Wow. Because it's, it's not any awareness in your communities. I come across so many dyslexics, especially in, you know, black minorities and Asian. They don't know that. It's, 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 it's funny and quite 
interesting that you've mentioned mm. black men mm. because men are generally stubborn oh yes no offense Again, guys <laughs> in um acknowledging their situations mm -hmm. now if a woman can't even tell the world there's dyslexia, then it's a shame. Imagine a man. A man. I've Absolutely. got to be the man. Yes. I've got to be tough. Oh, if he's a lion. Yeah. Yes. And so he diagnosed you, and then he, what did he say? And then what he diagnosed me, so, and he told me, go to the, the YouTube, find out all these successful people, most of them, they are dyslexic. Mm -hmm. But you'll be surprised, they all, most of them, they are white. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, send me, go and do your investigation. Mm. Go and find out what is uh, dyslexic. Go and find out all these powerful people. Mm. Stephen Jobs. Um, Steve Stephen Joe, Jobs. Um, uh, Virgin Whippy, guy. Um, Richard Branson. Richard Branson. He's yeah. so proud of himself. Yeah. He said, I, my teacher Steve Jobs, by the way, the founder of Apple, guys. Apple, yes. Dyslexic. And Richard Branson, Richard the founder Branson. of Do you Virgin? know what the, the Richard, uh, Richard Branson, his teacher, used to tell him? Eva is going to be uh, um, a bean man. Or uh, he's going to end up in prison. A bin man in yeah, prison, prison because he was dyslexic. Because he, yes. Because That's he, what people told him. Yes. Oh, so wow. many teachers, you know, most of them. Teachers? He was his teacher. A teacher told Richard told Branson Richard Branson, that. yes. Wow. And I thank God now he's so supportive of every organization who supports dyslexics. Okay. So quickly. Yes. And then um, mm. he did quite a few refer uh, referrals that I had to do. Mm. Because it's quite a lot. You know, it's a long procedure mm. to get diagnosed as an adult. Mm. You know, a lot of funding needed to yeah. be to put into place yeah. and stuff like that. Then I had an assessment. That assessment, Sister Bijou, I remember when that assessment came. You know, it's like I've faced the reality now. You know, this is what What did it the is. assessment involve? The assessment means that they're going to assess you to really confirm that you are dyslexic and mm. also they're going to know the level of your dyslexia mm. and what you're capable of and what you're not capable of. Basically, to to give you confirmation of your 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 um uh handicap so this is what you're able that's to the do. word <laughs> that's the word i think it's the word disability and handicap yeah, yeah. that scares a lot of people. people and so when you found out how did you decide to then tell the world wow uh i remember i came I had my results it took me two days i couldn't leave my home why it's actually the reality hit home there was something wrong and i felt like i was telling god why all these years why ain't nobody noticed why anybody supported or knew about this mm. and i had to go through what I, I i went through quickly tell me what kind of thing did you went through i mean you mentioned depression but what <laughs> things did you go through do you know as, what yeah, sister i don't like talk about this because i want to talk about it and talk about this to to encourage some dyslexic child out there, some dyslexic person out there, you haven't committed no crime. Uh -huh. You don't need to be hiding your heads. It, dyslexic, that's what American people call it, is a gift, it's something God has, you know, chose to give it to you. Okay. I went through, oh, sometimes you, yeah, yeah. I'll go for job interviews. Mm. I'll walk in, you know, but full of elegance, full of confidence. I'm not gonna share it to you, sister, I won't. I, I've oh, come on past on. that. Oh, <laughs> People are watching. I'm not going to... even one. Just... Okay. Um, I'll walk into a job, you if know. If you're comfortable, of course, I am, talking about I am it. perfectly comfortable. Yeah. If today I can share it to the whole wide world. Yeah. So, so it means I am comfortable. And then uh, I'll walk into a job interview, you know, dressed up, well, elegant, you know, well, the part for the job. And then when they'll get to the part, they'll tell me, can you just fill that out and stuff uh. like that? And then I'll make up excuses. I'll walk out because you can't fill the form and there's a struggle mm. so that is the when i decided to come out to start running this organization because i know there's someone out there needed this services needed the support that is not there okay. that is the reason i decided to create Oh, wow. African Dyslexic Thank you. Uh, we're going to go for a break for a few mm -hmm. minutes. I just want to quickly want to read. Uh, Pastor Eunice Landu says we need to break the taboos in our communities. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Rose Ramirez, for this good work and excellence. Thank you, Pastor Eunice Landu from Canada. Sister Sozinha says a lot of people and parents are in denial about these issues. Uh, a lot of black male between the ages 13 and 15 while in prison, I have literacy and numeracy problems. Thank you, Sister Sozina, for sharing. Thank you for sharing um, that. God we're going to talk sister. about mm. how the children, I'm going to bring in other guests mm -hmm. after this break. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about how it affects children. But quickly, 
what advice would you give to a mother that is watching now regarding uh, if this child is struggling what advice can you give them having been a child of dyslexia yourself in the african community probably having been labeled stupid and oh, you say good oh, for nothing slow. what uh, advice would you give to a parent watching mm. now who's got a child who's struggling but they haven't been assessed yet uh what i have to tell the parents is do not give up on your child mm -hmm. be very supportive parents always encouraging your child you need to open your eyes and see what your child is good at. Mm -hmm. Focus on that. If you find out what your child's good at, you know, you need to support that child in yeah. that talent they have. Wow. And then go seek all the helps are out there. Mm. But we seek help only with prayers as Christians. Can There's we add something else on top of prayers? Absolutely. Prayer works. Mm -hmm. Thou thousand percent. Hundred is not enough. Uh, yeah. Thousand percent. Mm -hmm. But there's people out there who God already, you know, Form them in that, yes, in, in that, that field. field. They'll be able mm. to help your child. So make sure you knock yeah. in the right door. Give your child support. Listen to your child. Mm. Be the best is your child. When the, you know, the ball gets tough out there, they can come up to you and share your, the pain wow. with you. Thank you so much. Don't go away, still there. <laughs> You're watching Talk To Me show with a woman of God, Rose Bijou Ramirez. Mm -hmm. If you're just joining us, please don't go away. Share and share and share. Dyslexia is one of the taboo subjects. I'll be bringing a lot of taboo subjects on this show, things that people don't want to talk about. I want to talk about it. So we get to the bottom of it and I'll bring people with experience. So you don't say, Rose likes to talk about things she knows nothing about. Well, mm -hmm. hello, somebody is here with that so we're gonna take a short break and then we're gonna come back with other guests so we can discuss further you're watching talk to me stay tuned
Going up, going up, from glory to glory. Going up, going up. La coyemba, lelo pona kose pelisa ya we. Talk to me, it's Woman of God, Rose Bijou Ramirez. <laughs> if you just joined us, it's Mata 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 Mata. Huh? If you haven't gone to like my music, what are you waiting for? That single is mine, it's my song. Go on YouTube, type Rose Bijou Ramirez, mm? share, like. Comment on that song. Come on, didn't you like by fire, by force? We are going forward by fire, by force. We come on by fire, by force. It doesn't matter what dyslexia does, mm -hmm. doesn't matter what anybody says you are. <laughs> if God <laughs> says you're gonna go up, <laughs> you're gonna go up. Absolutely, Sister Iris got diagnosed at the age of an ad as an adult, she made it now. Amen. She's got an, a, an association. Mm -hmm. called Africa Dyslexia United. Mm -hmm. So by fire, by force, that song will bless you. And why not? He said, Ikean Kudinga, I'm waiting for your video. Mm -hmm. Make me a video of the favorite part of the song and send it to me. I'm going to share it on my page. Okay? By fire, by force. Sister Giselle Matt, you like by fire, by force. I'm waiting for your video. Now, back to our topic of today. <laughs> we are talking about the effect, the the impact of this lecture on the education system but i want to focus more on the ethnic minorities as you can see i'm black african i am black right. african i'm black and proud but mm -hmm. i'm happy 
for the work and the support that the Western culture has given me, but I love my African background. But the thing about being an African sometimes is that it can draw us back because there's too many taboos. Mm. I want to talk to teachers today. So my next guest is a teaching assistant. So she's a teacher who teaches children. And so during the pandemic, a lot of children have stayed at home. All kids have stayed at home. They have not been to school. Now imagine if your child already had a delay in learning, a learning <laughs> disability, dyslexia that you did not know about. Now they are being told to stay at home. You rely on the teachers to make your children smart. Now there's no teachers. So what's happening with the children? So. Hello. Hello. Hello, Francoise. Hello, Sister Rose. Actually, I should let you, my beautiful sister, you look great in yellow. I love oh, the colors you. going you on too. there. The matching skirts and the yellow blouse. Thank you. Looking thank so you very beautiful. much, Steve. Thank so you. So you introduce yourself to the people. Just okay. look at the camera over there yeah. and tell the people who are watching us who you are and what you do. Okay. Hello, my name is Francoise. Um, Makuzulu, um, also known as Francoise Royalty. Francoise Royalty? Yes. Because I'm royal. Hey, hey I'm yes, I like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So mm. um, I'm a teacher assistant in the primary school. I also am a, a minibus driver in the school. I'm a first aider. Ah. I'm an wow. interpreter. I'm, I'm a. Um, Sunday school teacher. <laughs> okay. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. Ooh. So, yeah. You guys have yeah. a whole biography going out there. Yeah, so, <laughs> so let's stop there. <laughs> That's enough of me. Okay. So. so I'm interested in you today. You're beautiful. You're doing great. Thank but I'm you. interested in you today as a teacher. Yes. I know you're teaching assistant, but I want to talk to you as a teacher. Yes. Because you That's assist okay. teachers, you teach children. Yeah. Now, with the pandemic, what's been happening with the children who have been told to stay at home? What are you as teachers doing yeah. for, as a general? Yeah. So... Some children, as we know, the key, key workers' children and vulnerable children, they are going to school. So these are just a little kind of portion. We can't say. In our school, we have between 25 to 30, depending on, depending on the days. Yeah. But this, the children that are staying at home, they are, they are having support on, online. So they're having like Google. Online support. Online Explain support. the online support bit. So the online support, you can't, we, we do the Zoom or, or Google. So there's like, a, or also on, on BBC Bite Sites. Okay, I want, I, I, want, I want to know about these resources because I'm not a teacher. Yeah. If you want to talk about anesthetics, you want to talk mm -hmm. about surgery, yeah. you want to talk about diseases, Treatments, I'm there. I'm not a teacher. Well, you've talked about r online resources. Yes, yes. So Google, yeah. you're telling kids to go to Google yes. to help themselves with their studies. And you said something about what? B something bite what? Bite side. That's, bite, that's what, BBC. What's bite side? BBC bite side. So that's, that's where a British Broadcasting Corporation, so the TV. Yes. So bite side. Yes. What is that? That's where children can go and there, there's a daily program where they can have their English and maths lessons. So they can just go there and it's so free. they have an online teacher online online material so it's not, not the teacher not it's the them teacher. reading yes uh -huh. but the google classroom that's where you have a, an online teacher but it's not the teacher they used to it's, Most, it's yeah, a it virtual be, teacher no it's from your school aha uh -huh. from your school or right. the zoom as well zoom mm. so f you, the teacher from your school mm -hmm. and will be teaching you for like half an hour so just telling you what to do and things like that and then after the teacher you go you go back and just do your own work let me get this right children are at home during all this pandemic they're having virtual teachers online they are being sent to go to bbc bite site british broadcasting corporation bite size website yeah. to research studying materials and then how many times a day do you have a teacher call you on Zoom? Yeah, on Zoom, like, um, some, depending on the school, like, we have, like, a Google Classroom. You have, you have your teacher there, depending on, we can't say, like, 
No, like daily thing. How many times a day? Not a day. Not daily Not thing. Daily so thing. it could be a weekly thing. Mm -hmm. Not yes. So yeah, yeah it can be weekly thing. Mm -hmm. So you, on, uh, yeah, go on. So a child doesn't have a teacher every day calling them. Not every they day. They have scheduled schedule. days. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Can be different day. Can be one day, then after two days or so. But a child will have the material enough from until the the day that the teacher will be like calling. Available. But we do call. Like phone calls, like home calling. If who do you call, the child or the mother? Or the we parent? call the parent, and then the parent will, will will speak to the parent, and then if we need to talk to the child, depending on their age, we'll speak to the child just just to know how they're doing, how they're coping, just for that for their mental health. Just this is interesting because we're talking about dyslexia here, and you got children going online doing almost what university kids do: online studying. What age groups do you teach? I teach from three to eleven. To so eleven primary years school. Old. Primary okay. school. Okay. So how well are they doing? They're doing. It's all varies. We Let me ask. Say. What are the difficulties you are encountering? Yes, the difficult. Well, most of the time it's like we can see some children that that don't have enough resources like online resources so like the difficulties you're encountering is the resources That's first of all they have to go online then you have to have the resources what kind of resources like the computing like uh, uh, laptops or ipads that's so that's the ones that they need to have they just need to have those ones mm -hmm. and then we'll send the whatever we need to send them. so what about a child who does not have yeah, a laptop so, yeah so that's the child that hasn't have it we have hard copies that is being sent to the children that is provided for the children but also the children can well some schools that can let them borrow the the laptops and the children can take the laptops uh, laptops at home and then they can use it and return so it when whenever when the pandemic is <laughs> yes, over yes yeah thank you so much That's uh okay. Francoise. you're watching uh, talk to me uh, Pastor Yunus Landu, stay connected. Esperance Bukasa, stay connected. So Esperance says kids are being left to fend for themselves. Yes, kind of, but not really left. I, I know it's in more way. We know this time that we're going. Through. It's a difficult, it's a difficult, time, difficult yeah. time. Yes, but it's not like left to yes, but they've been guided to what to do. Mm. So they've been given steps mm. on what to do, mm -hmm. and then left. I know that it's. It's a bit hard, but it's also giving them that confidence of that they can do it. And we pray to God, by the time we go through this pandemic, they'll, they'll become stronger mm. and wiser. That's okay. what I believe. I know it's I like not you. everyone who will see it that way, but that's the way I see it. I like you. You are not oh. like the teacher of Richard Branson who oh. told him he's going to be a bin liner. Oh, Because <laughs> you. Because you're so confident they're going to come out stronger yes. and wiser yes. after the pandemic, doing all the self-studies, mm -hmm. more confident. Mm -hmm. An 11-year-old. I'll come back to you. <laughs> That's fine. But I'll come back to... Yeah. To do, you, do you want to add something before I yeah. go to you? Yeah. Tell I'll me, tell me about the resources. The laptops and, yeah, like laptops and iPads for the parents, especially our community. The when you say communities, the African, the African black, community. black community. Tell me, tell me, sister. Yes, the parents that they don't really buy laptops or iPads for their children, not for playing, not for games, like for school. It's very important because, like now, for these children that don't have it, it's really hard. I know I'm saying that we do send hard paper, uh, hard, hard copies. copies. You mean papers you like mean this? Papers, yeah. yeah. Printed papers. Yes. But having the laptop in there itself is so much better <laughs> because um, because mm -hmm. i know I'm because, waiting. yeah so because you have more time you can't talk to your i know you can't talk to your teacher like on the phone as well but on the on the laptop itself you can go and do some res um, researches by yourself i know we're talking about the three to eleven years old but they're mo they're so clever than mm. you will imagine i've been I've been teaching for over 10 years, so I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So they're so clever that you, they'll tell you things that you, you, you'll be shocked. That yeah, you, yeah. That they're very intellectual, they're very resourceful young so, people of today. So sometimes we're letting our children down. It's the parents are letting the children down because 
we are so i'm not offending any parent here please, so please this is talk to me talk to me just, speak your mind I'm mind the saying, microphone yeah, yeah i'm mm. just saying for those par parents that mm. they think that it's not that important on their children's education mm. these kind of things they, are very important i know we resources know. like laptops they have to be buying laptops for their kids yes thank you yeah thank you very much if, if possible for each child to have their own one thank so there'll you. be no fighting at home and there'll be no and uh, it's my time as well oh um my class is, is going on now and then they're fighting for the laptops okay i'm gonna pause you there for yeah, a minute okay. i got something here but i i said i i like sister francoise very much i love her so much sister francoise i love you you're oh, so positive you. i love you too she said you. something we need to get laptops for our children resource is really important did she grow up in an african home i grew up not even having my own mobile phone no offense papa la joie no offense mama selena you know it's not like we didn't have a lot of money well there was a time we didn't really have the money but it got to a time we actually had money but computers are seen as such luxury and unfortunately some parents still carry that african mentality to europe they can buy themselves a laptop to be on their facebook to be on YouTube and watch my bokeh. I'm talking real stuff here. Pastor Eunice Landra, you listening? Mama Sina, you listening? Sister Sozia, you listening? Igreja di Angola, uh, the London in Angola, you listening? They, 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 they buy laptops for their own. Now the pandemic has come. Mm -hmm. Kids now need the laptop. Yeah. Where is it? Mm -hmm. My next teacher. Let me turn this way. <laughs> my next teacher. Talk to me. Talk to me. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Can you please introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah. My name is Marguerite Enriquez. I am a teacher assistant. I'm married. I got three children. I, uh, I do decoration, wedding decoration. Mm -hmm. There goes another biography. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I cover some events in our community. Yeah. And then uh, I do interpreting in our church. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Now, your colleague yeah. has explained about what you guys are doing for the kids. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. You are calling mm -hmm. virtually on now and again in the week mm -hmm. on Zoom. Yeah. You are calling on the phone. Yeah. You are giving hard copies for the underprivileged yeah. who have no resources like parents too stingy to buy mm -hmm. them any laptops but they can buy themselves Gucci oh, ensembles. Yeah, they yes. can buy themselves Dolce Gabbana, mm -hmm. you know, bags. Yeah. They can buy themselves church shoes, yeah. uh, Weston shoes, don't get me started. No, A pair of Weston, no. the, the cheapest yeah. is probably 250 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. That's the cheapest pair of shoes of Weston I know because my daddy, La Joie, he loves to dress up. Mm. As my friend Estash Sheke, Sheke would say, he loves Vivian Westwood. Estash would probably have a, a, a 15, you know, 1500 grand suit of, of um, Vivian Westwood. But if you're spending all that money on clothes, why can't you spend a le that much, much money on your children's laptops? Anyway, mm -hmm. so you're doing a brilliant job. Thank you. You're doing the best you can, yeah, considering. We are trying, yeah. But tell me, are all children that you call mm -hmm. really having access to these resources yeah most of schools have done their best to make sure that all their students has it and the school that uh, has the children that don't have it they encourage their, their students to go on the school website mm -hmm. so that they are not missing out so it's not up to school to give them a laptop mm -hmm. by the school where i work mm -hmm. we make sure all the children have a laptop. Out of the goodness of their yeah. heart, they're doing school, it. Yeah, so not, not, not everyone in a school, just in a special needs section. So you deal with kids who don't have special needs and those yeah. are special needs. Yeah. I want to talk about special, since you're sitting okay. next to Sister Sandra Iris, mm -hmm. yeah. I'll be asking both of you mm -hmm. questions. Now, we've talked about generally children yeah. mm -hmm. at home. Now, we talked about the difficulties of parents, some of them providing resources mm -hmm. Now there is that you are using as teachers in the UK, in the whole world, yeah. you are using parents as your assistants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Parents have now turned teachers. Mm, yeah. Is there somebody, is there a parent connected here today? Are you listening? Mm. You have now become a teacher on your CV. Yeah. You need to go and add teacher. <laughs> you have Drinker now become, can you, ask, <laughs> can you please ask the universities of, of London, of the UK, or oh, the 
education secretaries yeah. to send you all certificates, all parents. Yeah. You are now yeah, teachers too. You've jobs. passed. Mm -hmm. Well done. <laughs> now you've got parents as teachers. Yes. What about these parents who don't understand English? Mm -hmm. They have to start understanding now. No. Because um, it's the pandemic. They yeah. didn't understand English before the pandemic. <laughs> the kids are at home. Yeah. What about those who don't understand English? If you're in France, who don't understand French. Yeah. They only, mm, tell me, what are you doing? We, we speak to the parents. If the parents have difficulty, yes. they have to find someone in a community. Mm -hmm. In this pandemic system? Yeah, because the lockdown has been eased. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the whole thing as a general. Yeah, yeah, what so have you been doing with the parents who don't speak English, but you guys are sending hard copies? Yeah. You are sending Zoom yeah. videos? Yeah. What is happening with these children mm -hmm. whose parents yeah. cannot speak good enough English to support them, but you've made them your teaching assistants? What have you been doing? Yeah. In every family, if it's not the mom, maybe the, the dad, the dad will be able at least to understand a little bit what is written on the letter, what the, because the teachers have been through with the parents, mm. how to help the students, how mm. to help the children at home, mm. because they know that not every parent speak a good English or yes. speak English. Okay. So they, they took time to explain how the system is going to work. Mm. So now it's up to the parents, if they know that they are not able, go back to the school, tell the school that I can't do it. Mm. So, oh, and the school mm. will recommend mm. someone, as I say, someone from the community. If not, they have to arrange another alternative. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of parents don't speak English, but I've had no one recommend me to support them with their kids. Mm -hmm. So in that case... So are they the really using the resources like recommend a friend? Because I've had no phone call from my parents who don't speak English. Mm -hmm. You're all watching. Mm -hmm. Some of you are there. You didn't call me to support you. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, yes. Yeah, so, we, mm. don't, we know that there are parents that don't understand English. Mm -hmm. But if a parent has a grown-up child, let's say like a 10 years old, a 10 years sickness. old, some of them can even help their mother. But it's not the responsibility of the child. Okay, it's yeah. not the responsibility of the child to help the mother. Mm -hmm. We are in lockdown. Oh, yeah. it's being eased a little bit, but kids are still at home. Mm -hmm. So this child is 11 years old. Yeah. You've told them to go on Zoom meetings with you. Then you've got an hour mm -hmm. maybe with them. Yeah. Then you switch off your Zoom. Yeah. This child has to sit down, go on BBC Bite Size, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. start researching yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And then if they don't understand, they will say, Mommy, mm. Daddy, mm -hmm. I don't understand. Yeah. But this person mm -hmm. who's supposed to help them mm -hmm. doesn't understand English, know the work the child is doing. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. support? What, this yeah. child now needs to help the mother to help them. So I am a 10-year-old, an 11-year-old. Yeah. I'm not understanding, but I need to help my mother to help me. How does that yeah. work? Because e English has been as a barrier already mm -hmm. for the parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, But de depending on the subject. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. there's a subject mm -hmm. that, like let's say math. Math. If a ma yeah, if, if a parent can understand math, I think I'll, he'll be able to help. Mm. But a year, 11 years old is already in uh, year six, year mm. six, mm. Year, year five, year six. Mm. Some of them are able, some of them are called talent and gifted. Mm. They are able to do their work by their, themselves. Mm. If they know that the parents can't help them, they'll try themselves or they'll tell the teacher. Wow. Yeah, it's they'll hard. tell the teacher that my mom can't help me, my mm. dad can't help me. Yeah, that's the, the situation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, which brings me to si so just a minute, the sister Iris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, as an adult, you were struggling, mm -hmm. studying. Now, imagine yourself as an 11 year old, a 12 year old, a 13 year old, mm -hmm. struggling to study. They bring you a laptop, they tell you to go to BT Bite Size, they bring you a hard copy of work. <laughs> What would you do, or what did you do, because you had a lot of hard copies to read in your time when you were studying? As a child, if I'd been given the way to do it by myself, first of all, the education where I'm tending, mm -hmm. they should know my need. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? They should know my need. Mm -hmm. They should have more um, easier ways for me to get around of, of the tasks that I, I've been given to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. The support should be right in my level mm. do you understand it should be right on my level because uh, uh they are in a special need let's mm. say okay I, i'm listed under special need mm. so the way my learning my parents can't they can't teach me mm -hmm. do you understand mm. because the way my learning my parents you can't need someone teach me. specializing in special special um, specialist mm. to come on board to teach me 
but it's not the pandemic. Put yourself in the pandemic. Th there's lockdown. So imagine this child. I'm trying to think of the mm -hmm. mental status of this child mm -hmm. already panicking about the education, not seeing their friends. Mm -hmm. They worry they cannot read properly if they've got dyslexia or some form of learning disability. They're relying on a parent who maybe does not understand the workers. Most, let's face it, most African uh, parents in Europe, in the diaspora, don't really pay that much attention in their child's uh, schooling. Education's, I like what Pastor yeah. Eunice Landry has written. She says, this pandemic has given parents time to spend time with their the children children's. to understand this education of their children. Mm -hmm. Now they will know masses like that, but they mm -hmm. didn't. So most Africans don't really get involved. Mm -hmm. Now, what is this child doing? Of course, the child's got no choice. No choice. Yeah. No choice. Mm -hmm. And it's so painful because during um, the COVID-19, I was in Congo and I was getting so many emails from youngsters. Mm. School, it was the escape. Mm. Because the parents would not help them. Their parents do not even understand the condition. Mm. So being at home 24 hours with the, with the parents, it was it's such a struggle. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. And then they were seeking help. Where do they get help? The child started to get depressed. The mothers, you know, thinking... There's a lot of mental what, health yeah, in the children. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. And I didn't even know that so many children wanted to commit suicide because other siblings at home, they were able to do that. Wow, you know, suicide is increasing suicidal. dyslexia. Abso this yeah. pandemic, it's been it rising in a way the government thinking, my, my God. Mm. Do you mm. understand? So... Example, as you were saying, there's a two laptops. Okay, some families are blessed with two laptops. Mm. The other child, he's just getting on with his work. Mm. And then dyslexic child, that the parents do not even have a knowledge. He struggles that much. Mm. He's struggling. Mm. Yeah. What is going on here? The parents do not understand. The mm. child does not understand. Mm -hmm. It becomes a war in the house. Mm. Wow. You understand? Okay, the child you. wants to walk out from it, starting from depression. Mm. So, but if they parents really pay the attention because of most of those african parents they do tell them that your child is in special need but do they believe it mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the oh. it. The of course so, so, so there's a lot of denial, denial. so somebody being they refuse the diagnosis oh. of the child wow 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 this day, even if <laughs> the english as a second language you are listed under special need yes yes, yes. yes. Yeah. because there is an impediment the there impediment already of, yeah there's a barrier for lang mm -hmm. language so many parents you know accept they say oh my child mm -hmm. can speak mm -hmm. at home um, he can read yeah. and write. How come they're saying he has a special name? <laughs> because the child is sitting there with a book like that. Yeah. Doesn't they mean they're actually they're reading. They're reading. I, I'm giving but all the parents who are watching me right mm. now, yeah, look at you know, yeah. do this homework. Mm. You'll be amazed. Go to your child's school bag. Mm -hmm. Open yeah. up. See inside yeah. the books. Yeah. See what that child writes. Mm -hmm. It's full of mumbo jumbles. Lines. Lines. And then if you really want to know your child is, is been struggling with that, you know, ask them to read what they have written. Mm. And also, question mark. Also mm. attending parent meeting. Yeah. Pa meeting. Okay, let's talk about African minorities. African, do they yeah. attend the parent some evening? Some of them do yes, attend, yes, but they but still deny with dyslexia. Yeah. Do you know how many children they've wrote to me that they yeah. said, the school have told my mom. They've told my dad. Yeah, they They're saying, rejected. no, it is uh, uh, not be able to read and write is a uh, white people's things. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. It's a stigma attached to that. It's a stigma. Denial. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'll go back to this. Mm. When yeah, because parents, you're about to finish Parents, soon. all mm. children are struggling at home. Please call your school. Mm -hmm. Your school is there. It's now closed. Yeah. Like, the school yeah. are open Monday now. to Friday, no, yeah. no weekends. Now it's open. <laughs> yes, yeah, so mm. the school is still open. You can't close the school. The schools, so. Yeah, most mm. of the schools. Mm. So call your school and tell them that this work, we can't do it. Be, just be Read open. Your be open reports. to the school. They'll mm -hmm. help you. They so will help you. Don't mm -hmm. stay that, like as if you are on your own. No, mm. you're not on your own. Okay. I have a few questions for the two of you before yeah. we finish up. Sure. So... I'm going to start with you first. Uh, uh, Francoise, yes. the um, teaching, the tests, the pandemic has happened. Yeah. Kids are not going to school. Yeah. How are they going to be tested mm -hmm. to see if they will pass? Because they've basically not been to school since the end of February. Yeah. So how are you going to test out the children and assess that they can pass or fail? Okay, as it stands, because the government is changing. We're talking about day. the UK government here. Yeah, that's now. what I'm saying. The mm. UK government yeah. is changing every day. So yeah. as it stands, 
Uh, it will be the mock exams. The chi well, did they do the a mock before? For for the children, for the older ones. Will uh, they do a mock or did yeah, they, they do a mock? Yeah, or, yeah they did. The they ones did that they already did. did. So they will go based so on whatever, the results of yes, the mock whatever, exams? Yes, uh -huh. whatever they already did before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So they, it will be that. Mm -hmm. uh, their predict, predicted grades. Uh -huh. And also it will be like teacher's assessment, like ongoing assessment, the one that we do almost every day in class. Wow. So, so that's, that it'll this be depend, depending on that, as it stands. Okay. If they're not Thank going you. to change. Thank <laughs> you. So this child is dyslexic. This child has a learning disability. Mm -hmm. Maybe they did not perform so well on their mock exam because maybe mm -hmm. they study so well on the real exam because they want mm -hmm. to give it all their all. Mm -hmm. They did a mock. They didn't really do so well. You're going to base their pass mark on the mock. How is that going to affect people with learning disabilities? Can you just quickly tell me? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, some, le yeah, some students with learning disability don't really don't. take exam mm -hmm. depending on the assessment. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah, mm -hmm. Depending on which year, which mm -hmm. stage they are. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the ones in the primary, they don't do any exam. How do they you pass them? Yeah, they have the these system skills. over here. They just pass. They just transit. They don't fail. So how do you pass them? <laughs> or how how do you but assess yeah, yeah. that they are able to transition from one grade to the next? Depending on the level of disability, those mm -hmm. who have severe disability don't have nothing to do. Those who have mild, they they have work that they can do. The ones that they are like able case to do. work sort of. Yeah, yeah, they don't really do case practical work. work. Depend, yeah, yeah, just practical work. Mm -hmm. They just test them. They learn through that because mm -hmm. they are, they can't take exam. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what resources? Mm -hmm. No. What advice and resources can you advise parents to have? What advice can you give parents to have on kids who are at home now, stuck people in ethnic minorities? What advice can you give them on the resources mm -hmm. and the support they can give their children now as teaching assistants? Before I go to Sister Iris to end up. Yeah, they have to discipline the children. The resource, as we said before, they need to have laptop, iPad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know that libraries are closed. Mm -hmm. They have to have a schedule in a house. A schedule for schedule, studying. Yeah, for study. They have to have a plan in the house. Mm -hmm. Because the child had already been affected through mm -hmm. the pandemic. They mm -hmm. lost the routine. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the parents have to be very disciplined. They have to really discipline the children. They have to have a set time. Mm -hmm. And then they have the government website where they can go for learning as well. Mm -hmm. Although the school website as well, they are putting mm -hmm. on yeah. information, the material, what they can do. Mm -hmm. So the parents have to be really work on that. They okay. have to have a schedule. They have to have a time. This is the right. time for learning. This is the time to do this. So they have to ha put things in place. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah? Anything yeah. you want and to add? Yeah. And also saying that the children are missing out. They're also learning new skills. We have to bear this in mind. Okay. They're you learning know, new. Tell new me what skills. new skills are they learning? Yeah, they're learning. Positive like teacher, yeah. tell us. <laughs> <laughs> they're learning like being at home, make, uh, cooking, baking, going. They're out. learning baking. Oh my, yeah. Your kids are learning how to oh, bake. Some and of them are baking. New skill. Yes, Come and new. send them home <laughs> to bake some cake for me. I love cake. Okay, yeah. go on, yeah. No, they're not in cake yet. They're doing <laughs> they're <not> cake. <laughs> cupcakes and okay, um, okay. Yeah, so they're so learning new skills. They're learning new skills. Mm, yeah, mm, it's mm. not just all the like. Mm, mm, mm. Have to be the classroom teaching mm, thing. Okay. We just have to. We have now. It's a new normal that we have to. So we have to be ready. Pandemic is a new normal. Mm. We're not going to go back to where we were. We like need to go back. By God's grace, we pray, we pray to God that we go back. Okay. But everyone will have something in mind that, okay, I have to be careful this and that. Mm. That's why I'm always, I'm going to go back to the uh, laptops. Parents, you can't buy it. Mm. Please, I'm not teaching anyone how to do their finance, but every child that we know, they, they can save. benefit. Save money. Save the, they're like 200 pounds. So 200 pounds, at least 20 pounds okay. a week, you can buy that laptop for a child. Okay. And support. Instead of buying those shoes. And you can get them on contract as well. And those shoes, mm -hmm. those yeah. clothes and all these. Save for your designer save clothes and save for resources. Invest you need for, your to for your child's education. Thank you. That's the foundation. Thank you. These children are the foundation. Are the children future. are paramount. Are children children paramount. paramount. And the education is paramount. Is paramount. So... Okay, Mama Irisa, Sister mm -hmm. Irisa, mm -hmm. uh, your foundation is so amazing. Thank you. Somebody wrote, 
early diagnosis is important Absolutely. early support is important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you were diagnosed as an adult and you encountered okay. a lot of obstacles mm -hmm. what advice can you give to people who are watching us regarding diagnosis of dyslexia because m m my, my teaching assistants have said there's a lot of denial involved uh, what advice can you give in terms of early diagnosis of dyslexia early diagnosis it's very very what important advice can you give yeah you? the school sometimes can be in denial because it Causes a lot to the government. The schools as well. Yes. Cannot yeah. can delay diagnosis. Yes, they Ooh. can deny in a way because it does cost a lot. Mm. Do you understand? It mm. costs a lot. They will be taking you left to right. Why? But there's, like I say, there's mm. organisations who support dyslexic children. They will come along. They'll do assessment. They'll assess that child because the school wants to prove. Because the school will tell you, um, no, maybe the child just being lazy. Maybe the child is not getting it. Give it a time. But as a child, it's very important to the African parents as you're listening to this. It's simple. We know, we've gave you small practice that you can do and find out your child is dyslexic. White or black, it doesn't matter. Dyslexic brain is the same. It doesn't have a race because a black brain, dyslexic is like mm. this. It still, it's still the same. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. Make sure you fight for your child. Only you, your voice voices play such a big role in that child's life mm. it's not fair the child goes to school just to watch others they want to join they mm. have to learn okay so you make sure you get the right support yeah okay. and you get your child uh, you know assessed mm. that child gets assessed you bring that report to the school then from then school you take it to a, a, a education support okay and the uh, uh, education disability or something like mm. that you take it on board with them mm. it is a long procedure that report is going to take your child even all the way to a okay. university how can people contact you there's there could be a woman there who's mm -hmm. suffering from dyslexia she's not a child she's a woman she's a married woman yes, I, they never understand each other with a husband it's why is oh, that that's crossing? another chapter we'll save that one for another show yeah you will come again <laughs> Because our time is up. Why yes. is that always crossing? <laughs> She's afraid to get diagnosed. What advice can you give to that young woman, young man? Yeah. What advice can you give them? Uh, if you're watching me out there, don't doubt yourself. Walk with your head full high. Because dyslexic, it's not lack of intelligence. Mm. You have got it all in you. you you're like a, a caterpillar. You need to be transformed as a butterfly. Hey, Amen. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So what you, tend, you need to do is contact us what we will need you're going to get assessed that assessment they're going to give you as an adult mm -hmm. you're going to take it everywhere you go mm -hmm. it's you know all need it's it, uh, it's different mm -hmm. maybe you're dyslexic you might be struggling at work you might be struggling in whatever you want to do we'll get you assessed it will open doors for you mm -hmm. so those documents is actually approved for your need Mm. So if you want, you can contact us. That's why we're there to defend you, to give you counselling, to make sure because there's so many wombs and then so many dyslexic people, they have low self-esteem. Mm. They don't believe in themselves. We're there to give you counselling okay. and to boost up your mm -hmm. well-being. Thank you, Sister yeah. Margarita. Yeah. I want to ask you to just close up by telling me, I do believe that there is a uh, high-quality teacher uh, student relationship that can improve the child's learning mm -hmm. now in this pandemic with the mental health of the children mm -hmm. tell me uh, what kind of support do you believe teachers can give to the children to people at home to boost their studying and their confidence because mm -hmm. you don't want kids to come back to school and be stupid mm -hmm. let me use the word They've stupid as people said having lost being derailed i love the positive teacher over who said they're going to come back mm -hmm. wiser and stronger but the reality mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. some may not yes. Yes. so That's what can you do to ensure they come yeah. back mm -hmm. okay still on track yeah that contact like now now some of schools are open already mm. if that child is happening that is continuing to go to school mm. the teacher will be able to continue to follow the learning mm. of that mm. student mm. continue to know that if the behaviors have changed mm. if the mental health has been affected mm. so for the schools that have been closed up to now even like the secondary mm. they still closed up to now mm. there's a phone call there's an email the teacher can always contact the student through email 
Nowadays, mm -hmm. most of the schools are portal. They have the way in which they communicate mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. They can send out letters as well. Mm -hmm. So, and speak to parents and make sure that child is still learning. What would you as a teacher do, knowing yeah. that the mental health of your, te your, your students, students are being affected in this pandemic? Yeah, I will maintain the contact. As I say, email, contact the, the student maybe weekly. Mm. Contact that student, make sure that they are doing their work. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they are obeying their parents. Mm. Making sure that they are doing their uh, assessments as well. Because some of them are still receiving the, the coursework mm. at home. Mm. Yeah, so making sure that they are still on board with their work. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Before we go for summer holiday. Wow. Uh, we have to stop because wow. it is a studio and we have uh, gone a little <laughs> bit over <laughs> our time. Because these are topics, are topics we need to organize events for mm -hmm. and actually sit down as a debate because mm -hmm. one hour is a bit too short. Mm -hmm. And um, Mr. Margarita has her experience. Mm -hmm. She's got her kids. She's got the students who are our extra kids. She's got the community sister. Francoise also has her you know, experience. And sister Iris, mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. But then because of time, we have to stop. But I, I want to thank Pastor Eunice Land. I want to thank Pastor Deborah Seke. I want to thank uh, Gertrude uh, Masamba for being connected throughout. I want to thank Sister Sozia. You guys have been very, very, very good contributors um, during this uh, session. It's a very, very important topic, but you know we need to dig deeper mm -hmm. as parents to understand where our kids are are lacking where they are f flowing we don't have to tell them they have flaws but we all have flaws as human beings mm -hmm. now imagine somebody with a delay in in studying and then the longer we leave it the worse the problem will get mm -hmm. my daddy always says a tree can be redressed uh -huh. once it's still growing it's still mm -hmm. a, a little a little seedling mm -hmm. yeah but once it's matured skew mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to bring it back to be straightened it becomes a harder you make a life much more difficult mm -hmm. now if we nail the conditions from the start mm -hmm. and we will avoid the depression mm -hmm. that sister iris went through if we nail the the, the the we find out the conditions earlier teaching assistants like sister margarita and sister uh, 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 Francoise can help these children much quicker. So invest in the lives of your children. Invest in the resources around you. You, mm -hmm. Sister Iris, who has been you know, through the dyslexia herself and has now started Africa Dyslexia United, use her. If you have in the church, in the community, in the family, teaching assistants, in this pandemic, Call them. Don't just call to talk about East Enders, about Maboke, <laughs> about uh, what music came out on YouTube. Call to talk about your children. Mm -hmm. Talking makes you, you know, know. Knowledge is power. Oh, yeah. There is somebody in the Bible called Moses. He had a speech impediment. Mm -hmm. But I quickly want to draw you to oh, Moses. Yes. Moses needed support. Port. You know, he mm -hmm. felt, I can't talk to the people, I mm -hmm. can't do this, you know, I can't, God, really, you can't send me, because the speech impediment made him feel so ashamed, mm -hmm. embarrassed, he felt he couldn't talk to the people, but then mm -hmm. when God gave him Perfect. Aaron yes. as a support, Amen. Aaron was his voice, you know, Aaron mm -hmm. could speak, you know, could help boost him, I'm sure even when he was stammering, you can do it, talking, <laughs> Aaron went, don't worry, I'm do right it. beside you, I'm right beside you, I can help you, you can do this, oh. you can do this, I'm right, I'm right next to you. Yes. So we God need people to say, I'm next to you. I'm right here. I'm yes. standing. If you struggle, I'm going to give you the push. If you struggle, I'm going to interpret for you. If you struggle, mm -hmm. we need that better boost and push. But parents, you can be that for your children. Yes. They're struggling in silence because they are too afraid. Mm -hmm. Be that push. Be that errand for your Moses. You know, mm -hmm. And Moses, try and find an errand to support you. If in oh, your yes. house there isn't an errand. Let your teacher be your errand. Oh, God, you can tell I'm an interpreter. There I go again. <laughs> it's not an interpreting workshop. So we are talking about Talk To Me, and I really want to thank Sister Margarita Enriquez for coming, mm -hmm. Sister Iris Sandra with Pleasure. Dyslexia Africa United, Dyslexia Africa, Africa United. United. And I want to yeah. thank Sister Francoise Royalty for being a great follower of oh. Christianity Daily, for being my sister, mm -hmm. my intercessor, mm -hmm. you know, supporting me with a quiet time and being here today. Thank you so much. You I want to thank J. Mike. Mm -hmm. Oh, Heaven Above Studio, you are top. There is a pastor, Eunice Lando, connected right now. She loves your work.
work. Mm -hmm. She loves your work so much. J. Mike, well done with Heaven Above Studios. I want to thank my sponsor, Justa Lue, Esperance Bukasa Ramirez, who's behind the Christianity Daily team, supporting and sharing and encouraging and bringing more resources to support us. I want to thank every person that connected today looking at the, the video i can't read all of your names ikan kudinga joana blessing uh, eddie matadi or oh, eddie matadi the maestro hmm. the album of hosanna my husband is coming but eddie matadi is one of the behind the wheels supporting so thank you all of you who've been supporting me without you this show couldn't be here but then again without us you wouldn't receive the knowledge that you received today so contact me if you want to support my show, it costs money to be here. It does. If you want something worth having, you've got to spend for it. It costs money. In whichever way or form you want to support me, contact me um, to support Christianity Daily Empowerment at Rose Bijou Ramirez of what I'm doing in a community. These people need to come more, but money is needed. So all good things have got to come to an end we came from work oh we are tired with so various things to do we've got to go so thank you again for being a made the god of the overflow mm -hmm. bless all of you in your homes remember sister iris um uh we're gonna share her link with a number after this video on this video if you wish to contact her don't be um, embarrassed <laughs> talk to her if you want to contact sister margarita there's kids at home we need support she's a teaching assistant contact her if you want to contact sister francoise contact her write to me and i'll send you their numbers private so that they can support you ah we have to go i'm very hungry right now so Thank you for being connected. Love you all, but God loves you more than I do. Until next time, be encouraged, be uplifted, and be blessed. Remember to talk to me. Bye-bye. Let's say bye-bye to Bye-bye. Bye-bye.